this is a almost oh, a random video. Um, there's no video. Oh, Fuck. It's just audio again. Sorry. But I think I'm making something that's kind of useful to know. It's basically anecdotes, mostly. And uh, I've been PC gaming since I was like 11. And that was back in 2008. Um, also, I started with like crappy games like Facebook and stuff, like Zynga games. Awful. It pretty much hellish, and then I went on to stuff like the GTA San Andreas, which I could somehow play, even the multiplayer part I could play. And then I went on to Left 4 Dead 2, and then Team Fortress 2, and yeah. I, yeah. I've played other games, but it's been quite a journey. And this wasn't even on a gaming computer, this was like an i2 core processor, and it, it was. It had this add on graphics card before we even had PCIe powered ones, as far as I know. It's been a fucking crazy journey, especially in like te technical, te technological evolutions. And this was before, well, as far as I know, before we actually had proper smartphones. I remember it was like a big talk sort of thing in school to talk about a smartphone, and also in like science classes, like. We had to just say that eventually they'll become waterproof and they have. It's fucking bizarre. But um, that's besides the point. I wanted to talk about uh, issues with PC gaming and work and stuff. And this is really like calling out some of the bullshit as well as what struggles I've had over the years of using computers for gaming and other stuff, like workloads and there's different things. Um, let's make another thumbnail. Yeah, this one I remember off the heart. SSD storage is the first one. Um, yeah, so in my most recent computer, which I'm using now, it is my recent computer, but um, I got an SSD as my operating system sort of file thing, I don't know what you call it. Basically it's where I have my operating system installed, which is Windows uh, 10. And whilst it did create a massive improvement in terms of performance, for like um, opening some stuff and even launching Windows itself, there's still like problems with it compared to like a hard drive which I was using before. And it, I've noticed it seems to deteriorate over time as I've got Windows updates. I've had this computer for years now. And every time it restarts or shuts down or updates or whatever, it still takes ages. Which it shouldn't, because my PC, I'll say the specs now. So a Ryzen 5800X, 32 gigabytes of RAM, 4 by configuration, 3600 megahertz. Um, and ASUS B550 motherboard and finally an RTX 3070. And the SSD is a Samsung EVO 970, I think. Yeah, I think so. I think it's 970, it was my graphics card as well. GTX 970, I was just thinking about that. Oh, this besides the point. But it's a pretty capable PC, especially how like I'm doing 44 gaming which is sort of why I want to talk about this. Let's talk about monitors and stuff as well. Um, but the SSD I've noticed is sort of degraded in performance and I don't know why this is. It just seems to have and it doesn't really say why. But there isn't even much on the SSD itself so I don't know why it's struggling exactly. But that's just something to sort of be aware of. Um, this brings up the next thing actually, video driver updates, these are fucking annoying. So sometimes they work and other times they don't. And sometimes it's so bad that they fuck up the system entirely. Like I have had blue screens because of it before. And this is worrying just for quite a few reasons and I'll go into some of them later. 
because some of them tie into the later things. But it still fucking sucks to just go through it all. And this is specific to NVIDIA specifically because it's always them. It's always NVIDIA. It's never anyone else, as far as I know. But the problem with NVIDIA is you often have to do like multiple steps for it. Which isn't great, and they've made it worse recently with upgrading the GeForce experience. But you have to go through that first, somehow open that to do it. And then you have to go to the update page, the drivers, and wait for it to fucking download the fucking download for the driver update. It's bizarre. And I haven't even got slow internet and it's doing this. It's weird. Um, and then you have to download the driver before installing it. And installing is different from downloading because installing is basically physically moving it. And downloading is just getting things ready. That's one of the interesting PC terms. Um, but yeah, this isn't even the annoying part though, because it gets so much worse. After you've downloaded it, you need to install it, of course, and use do Express installation, or something, whatever it's called, which is the normal one. And sometimes it says it didn't even need an update. It's bizarre because that, that just fucking annoys me. You don't need to do these multiple steps, and if the driver's like already good, why are you even give me an update? And it's probably just a boarding issue, I'm not sure. It fucking sucks. Um, this isn't even the bad part though. The bad part is that it makes all the windows rearrange, so it will move things around, especially if, if you have like different resolution monitors, speaking of which I might need to do that for my second monitor. Just to balance it out. But it also creates the issue of making things crash. So this includes like stuff like OBS and I think even Shadow Play to an extent. It even crashes your web browser if you're watching something. It, it does so many bad things and this shit needs to stop somehow because it's just disruptive, especially with me who has multiple windows open at once and need quick access to each of them for different reasons. I've got music, document, I've got plans for like artwork, I've got even like plans to listen to, I'll write down everything and it just crashes. It's not helpful and even my fucking Video download or audio download I think, with me. all that assets and stuff. That crashes too, for some reason. It's a fucking audio download. Why? But, you know, as if this wasn't bad enough, speaking of like NVIDIA, they have this thing called Shadow Play, which is like instant replay. And it used to work quite well for a while, but it sometimes crashed and I just made it shit. Eventually, when I was doing shadow, shadow play replays or whatever, they would start recording but not record anything. I mean, they would save a replay but not have anything there, no audio, no video. Sometimes even be corrupted, even though nothing's interfered with it. So I just gave up. I stopped using it and I started using OBS and I never regret that. If not OBS has its own issues, like needing to turn off instant replay if you record and stuff. It's still far more reliable. And even though it crashes with the video drivers, when you update them, it's still reliable. And that's the thing about it. It still has a base to go for what's good, and you can even record separate audio now. Which is something you couldn't do on... Actually, I think you could do on Shadow, but not. Sure, actually. But you used to be able to record like, individual audio. You can record it. And that's crazy, and you can adjust every single volume to your liking. It's just so good. Anyway, that's the video driver shit. Video. Video sucks, I think. I'll probably go on AMD next year. Next year, I mean, next computer upgrade, whatever. I still have an Optics 70, I'm waiting till that dies. 
but the next thing is 1440p experience and this is a recent one I did research on this because I'm a gamer and I like good graphics in games or good art styles as well but I hate seeing pixels like pixelated stuff just bothers me and to be honest 1440p is not great I was expecting a lot better and it just didn't blow my mind like I thought it would the interesting thing about this and I was thinking about this the other day when you talk about like 4k that's not 2 times 1080p it's actually 1080p times 4 because you can fit 4 1080p screens into that so it's just something interesting to think about there but like bigger doesn't always mean better like 1080p to 440p is like it's like a times 1.3 or something I don't know well, it's not even two times or anything accurate like that basically adding 360 pixels onto the width no not the width the height and that's nothing really to be honest like the extra 100 just doesn't work even like for width as well which is technically bigger it's like 600 extra pixels and that's not good enough you can still sort of see them depending on the size and I've got the smallest one you can get and it's still visible which is crazy because I don't have good eyesight I'm not even like a close range sort of person and I can still see them um, the other thing that's terrible of this is the cables oh my god the cables are fucking abysmal um, this is actually going into my next I don't know why I mix that also the high frame rates are good but with the HDMI you can only achieve 144 on 1440p or 2k as it's called apparently not sure why though uh, the next thing is actually about Spayport because this is the only way to play it high quality but I have multi monitors so it doesn't work because it keeps rearranging your windows the Spayport wouldn't be bad if it didn't keep fucking rearranging your windows and the only fix for this is another fucking piece of software which is a common occurrence with all this shit I downloaded persistent windows but that's even had its issues and doesn't even always work like sometimes it rearranges it back to something you didn't want it to be and so it's unreliable and I just ended up switching to HDMI that seemed to fix it it just fucking sucks um, I only lose like 26 hertz from going to HDMI and that's fine you still get HDR depending on the cable though that's the important thing because not all HDMI cables support it um, on the topic of monitors though the HDR is certainly meh now, I'm quite sensitive to colours I noticed it but I don't think most other people will just notice there's a higher range of colours like especially greens and stuff it's kind of crazy, it makes things all vibrant and true to life. But if you don't notice, it's not a big deal when it doesn't do anything to your brightness and stuff. And if you're used to using like digital vibrance, like I have, or game filter, which adds vibrance, you don't need to worry about HDR. Trust me, it's not worth the extra money, it's just a marketing gimmick at this point. Um, I certainly prefer HDR myself. And the final thing about monitors is a physical issue, depending on the design. I have a Gigabyte, I think it's M27Q or something. I can't remember the model. Why isn't it written down anywhere on it? That's fucking stupid as well. <laughs> Another issue. What like about Asus one? I think it's Abrams. No? Apparently not. With these companies, like, people want to know what their monitors are called. I don't care if that's HDMI. But the problem with this is it uses a strange system 
for on and off. I tell my ones it's off just to preserve sort of lifespan and it's worked for years. I've had one more on this for over four years now, I think it's still fine. Uh, turning them off, I think, is generally a better idea than leaving them on. The problem is, with the gigabyte one here, it's bad because you can't turn it off properly. Uh, for some reason, you have to hold it down for five seconds, the quote unquote power button, but it isn't at the bottom, it's a joystick. That controls the settings. So if you even move slightly, because it's sensitive as fuck, it will open the settings instead of turn off the monitor. It's just why? It's so stupid. You can't disable as far as I know. But it's really bad. And this is generally unbelievable because I haven't found a fix for it and at this point, I want to change monitors because that's such a big thing as well. It doesn't auto turn off as far as I know either. It's just baffling how you can even overlook something like this. And this is the first and only monitor I've used of like eight that I've owned that have had this thing, this dongle for a fucking power button. It's so janky. So the next issues I'm going into are more sort of outside the boundary of gaming. Um, sort of hardware as well. So I'm a musician and I've tried to use an audio interface and they don't work properly. I've tried two and I can't remember what the other one was but I remember I got this like Steinberg something and it was like a mini audio interface and it looks great and it sort of worked great as well. But it had one major issue or two actually. It wouldn't work with Asia for All, which was necessary for it. Because Asia for All never works on my computer for some reason. And nobody would tell me why. It's like some hidden secret to fucking enable it. But it also just had latency when I was able to hook it up for a different audio thing. Um, what's that sound drop? I can't remember. But it has this massive latency issue and it makes it impossible to record an actual guitar. And even then, I do have latency issues on just a Rocksmith cable here. And I can't record guitar. But it's not specific to FL Studio, I think, but it's just crazy and it? it's meant I couldn't do any like proper covers and stuff. Meaning everything I've done is VST metal and stuff, like things like that. It's not me actually playing it, it's just VSTs and it's like, ugh, it sounds so samey after a while. It's one of the things I get burned out about on it. But long story short, all your interfaces don't work and also one thing that nobody tells you about them is they require you to upgrade to 24-bit, like audio systems or whatever it is. And this causes so many problems with games and stuff because it just doesn't work, it's not compatible. I think it even had issues with like Team Fortress 2, if I remember correctly. Uh, it's not worth it. Um, next thing is a hardware issue, wireless and stuff. I've used a lot of Bluetooth devices and I've mainly used them for phones now because they actually work on the phone. PC on the other hand, no. So my motherboard has no native Bluetooth, so it needs an adapter, and all the adapters fucking suck. I've had three of them in total, I think, and I'm convinced it's not suitable for any sort of Bluetooth device that you own. It's not worth it, even if it's like the most reliable product, supposedly, adapter or device, whatever. It's not worth it. Because it just doesn't work. And the thing that makes it worse is it seems to make my computer crash and burn. <laughs> no, not burn. No, it makes um, the dongle crash and this means that I have to reset the device or unplug it, unplug it back in or uninstall it, then plug it back in, unplug it back in again. 
It's fucking stupid. I, I just don't get it because you could make this work, you could fix it, and this is a Microsoft problem, I think. But they don't, and so I can't use Bluetooth devices. I used the keyboard for a while and it was great, it worked for like a week, and I was like, ah, this is fine. I quite like this keyboard. It's great that I can move it around wherever I want. There's no wires in the way. Because that's a big shame really. But get to a point where I wake my PC up from sleep and suddenly it's not working. Great. That's fucking useless then. Oh, it's dead to me. So I have to plug back in a normal keyboard and yeah. I'll return that fucking keyboard because of that and it has a, it's a Bluetooth issue with PC or something. I just don't get it though because I want a wireless device, I want a wireless mouse especially. But it, you just can't get it to work because for some reason it just doesn't work on Windows 10. It's so stupid, I, I don't understand it at all and you'll see this a lot more. So yeah, why this is just not suitable at the moment. And I obviously can't recommend it myself. Uh, keyboards. This is number one. They are annoying. It says every keyboard manufacturer seems to want to, or seems to think that gamers want, is noisier keyboards and flashier ones for that matter. But uh, my case is unique in that I want something that isn't noisy and is flat. My clamped off keyboard, which I think both coincide with each other. And since there's a possibility of like holographic keyboards in the long future, that may need like light pressing and stuff, it's good to get that practice. But, um, yeah. And also, some keyboards with RGB just sometimes rub out. I've known a lot of keyboards do this, but the more sort of premium ones don't. I had a Razer keyboard that didn't, and uh, so I have my Corsair Strafe at the moment, which hasn't. Which is crazy. I've, you could see the oils on that bot button just <laughs> covering it, the buttons even. And it's not scratched one bit, which is crazy. It seems rare to me for that to happen. Um, but yeah, keyboards have a lot more to go as well. And noisier isn't better. In my opinion, especially if you're using a mic, it's worse. And this is the only keyboard that's not as noisy as others. I'm pressing it as hard as I can. And then lighter, 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 this. Much feather. That's pretty good. That's the only good keyboard I've found, and it's not even a flat one, unfortunately. Um, next thing. It's actually a software thing, multitasking. I don't know about anybody else, but I multitask a lot, and I've done it ever since I've had my GTX 970 and i5 quad-core system. But even now, with my current system, it still has problems. As I say, I'm gaming or something, I'm doing a live service game, which usually suck. It depends on the grind and if you enjoy the game, but if you're doing those sort of things, they're just grindy and boring. You want something on the side, like a video. And I've done that for years, and the problem is it makes the game either lag or have latency issues. And it's usually lag, actually, you now I think about it. I thought it was latency, but it's actually lag. And it's not because of recording. I've tested this before. It's always because of like the video in the background. So that's causing issues as well. And it sucks because I have ADHD as well. It's not diagnosed, but I know I have it. Oh, but, um, but I need something on the background, so whenever I get distracted, I've got something to focus on. I do that with my artwork, for that matter. I don't like making artwork, but I have something to look at when I'm distracted. And my artwork is actually often so sort of simple to do. You don't need to focus too much. It, whenever I work with words, actually, in audio, it's always more distracting. Um, music usually requires both, so I can't watch anything whilst I'm doing it, but the point is, multitasking just can suck as well. 
because you want to do things and get on with your day. Fit as much into it as you can and then you can't because of fucking lag and stuff. It inhibits the experience to an extent and yeah, that sucks. Especially worse on older systems, but even mine, it still struggles and it's bizarre. And I'm not sure what the fix is exactly because even though browsers have inbuilt, um, what's it, um, energy efficiency, like who's in Edge, 81% savings and it says memory savings, 1 gigabyte saved by saving tabs. 24 gb remaining usage on the secret tabs. What does that mean? I don't know. Wait, it's not even on. <laughs> Active maximum, yeah, there we go. I might have turned it off though because of it making videos stop randomly, I don't know. But it, it just doesn't make a difference though. So I would rather save the energy, but come on. The next thing is an obvious one, and this affects every single person I've known. I've known nobody who's never had an issue with Windows, and Windows is always a problem. It's always the crux of the problem, and it's probably the same with most of my issues here. So, it's actually Kryptonite. Kryptonite. It crashes nearly all the time, well, boosts do for me. Uh, it's stopped since. It's like blue screens and the last one I ever got was actually nine months ago. And these crashes are so vague and the errors and messages, they don't tell you what to do. They don't tell you how to get help or even fix the issue. So it's useless in a sense. But this isn't the only thing. Windows 10, as it's been updated, has become more and more inaccessible. It's become less and less customizable has less advanced settings which you need to fix these issues and it's just fucking crazy but um, I remember on Windows 10 you could go crazy on it, you could change the font and everything you could change the taskbar colour and even have like an animated background without the use of like wallpaper engine I think but there were other things but I can't remember what it was um, but Windows 8 is where it's starting to suck, and as it's up here, it's gotten worse. But, like, even looking for settings that Microsoft themselves suggest as fixes, they don't ever exist, and also because they keep updating this and removing things, some of these things do not exist and are not applicable. It's like bizarre. So, say you need to turn off power saving settings on a device like I've tried to with Bluetooth. You can't. Because the setting does not exist. It's nowhere. It's not under device manager, it's not under control panel. As far as I know it's not even in the fucking command prompt. It's like why? It's just so bad. Um and this means problems become unfixable. I've even got one recently where it takes me about like 10 to 30 seconds to connect to the internet whenever I start up my computer. It's like such a weird sort of niche issue and it has no fixes. The troubleshooter does nothing. Windows support did nothing. So it goes to show that the operating system is unreliable. And even then, when you go into like registry territory, which is like super advanced, it's dangerous. It's broke my computer once, it fucked up everything. It meant that I could barely access files without it crashing. And the only fix for it wasn't actually um, reinstalling the operating system. Because I tried that on the system itself. Whenever I got the troubleshooter to work. Because it just kept coming out with error every time I tried it. And guess what fixed it? Installing it from a USB drive. It's like, what? This is how fucked this system is. It's like, so bizarre. It's crazy, I have to reinstall everything after that. 
Asian software. Luckily, all my files were safe, but Jesus. That's scary. Um, and this, this all came out, by the way, from trying to fix issues from like, from like before. And the only registry fix I've ever done since then is to remove the fucking thing that shows up when you move your mouse to the side. It shows up a side panel and it always showed up with like the Wacom tablet when I used that. Wacom, I don't know how you say it. I had to disable that because it's getting in the way and there's no Windows button to disable that. Again, inaccessible. That could be easily done. It's just fucking stupid and it's literally easy to say. I shall say it at the end, but yeah. These are the problems with PC gaming and working and why they can suck. I want to see if I could play mouse and keyboard on console games. I'll do it. No fucking question ask. No, I okay. got um, was it, um, video cards. I've recorded my games through that and play it through my computer so if that's even possible. Apparently it can be and there's a delay, but I don't know. I'd rather do that. Um, yeah, I use my computer for up to 10 hours each day and I cannot stand these problems. And it's so disruptive as well and bad. I remember when my PC used to wake up from sleep randomly and it caused me severe anxiety. I was actually having anxiety attacks over it. You know, I'd just be there laying in bed, worrying about it and then I'd fall asleep. And then my computer would wake up, it'd click, and it'd make a noise, and it'll fucking light up. It just got too much for the end, and so I went into the registry and I think it's hard to say all that. I'll finish the schedule, I think. It was something that fixed it, but I told Microsoft about it years ago, and they only fixed it. I think at some point in like 2020 or something, or just before that. It was so bad, and yeah. And I think I've developed anxiety from that alone, rather than issues that I had in real life, which are far more severe. And the fact that something so small can do that is just crazy. So yeah, um, my message to Microsoft, good job idiots, stop making operating systems, please. <laughs>